If not for Earl Edwards, NC State football history would look decidedly different today. A native of Huntington, Pennsylvania, and a graduate of Penn State, Edwards arrived in Raleigh in 1954 after 18 years as an assistant coach at Penn State and Michigan State, established powers with all the resources needed to win. NC State, by contrast, had virtually no resources when Edwards came to town. Riddick Stadium, state's tiny on-campus facility, seated about 20,000, less than half the capacity of stadiums in Chapel Hill, Durham, and other ACC locales. Lack of ticket revenue meant that state had one of the smallest budgets in college football. Edwards had just four assistant coaches instead of the typical eight or nine. Wolfpack players often paid their own way to school as the program had just 10 scholarships when Edwards arrived. In order to raise revenue, Edwards chose to forego the usual allotment of home games and took his team on the road to play in larger stadiums with larger payoffs. State only played three home games per year from 1957 to 1964. Edwards even allowed the Wolfpack's home games versus North Carolina in 1957, 1959, 1961, and 1963 to be played in Chapel Hill because it was so much more lucrative financially to play there. State played the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill nine consecutive years from 1956 to 1964 and won six of the nine. Edwards had a 9-8 and eight record versus UNC. It was a slow uphill fight, but Edwards steadily built State into a consistent and competitive program. His first winning season came in 1957, with ACC Player of the Year Dick Christie leading the way. State finished 7, 1, and 2, and won its first conference championship in 30 years. The Pack ended the year ranked number 15 in the national rankings, the highest final ranking ever to that time. The 1960s saw the emergence of NC State as the ACC's top football program. From 1960 to 1969, the PAC led the ACC in wins with 55, conference wins with 44, and conference championships with four. Edwards coached 48 All-ACC players in the 1960s and seven All-Americans. After winning three consecutive conference championships from 1963 to 65, the Wolfpack moved into Carter-Friendly Stadium on October 8, 1966. The new stadium, with an announced capacity of more than 50,000, would not have been possible without the remarkable turnaround Edwards brought to the program the previous 12 years, especially the mini dynasty he established in the early 1960s. The new stadium allowed the Wolfpack to play a full complement of home games each year, and that, in turn, brought in much needed revenue to further upgrade the program. And Edwards kept on winning. He fielded his best team in 1967, the fabled White Shoes defense, which finished 9-2 and two and defeated Georgia in the Peach Bowl. A year later, the Pack won its fifth conference championship under Edwards, winning six of seven conference games. After four years in the new stadium, Edwards announced his retirement following the 1970 campaign at the age of 62. NC State football has enjoyed more than its share of great moments since then. And every successful coach and player to come through the program in that time owes a debt of gratitude to Edwards and the near miraculous transformation he brought to the program. He's the winningest coach in program history. A four-time ACC Coach of the Year, he won five conference championships in 17 seasons. Edwards coached 66 All-ACC selections and eight All-Americans. NC State produced just five All-Americans in 61 years before he came to town. He coached ACC Players of the Year Dick Christie and Roman Gabriel, with Gabriel winning Player of the Year twice. I think it would be a, a wonderful recognition for him that they were had so many wonderful teams, so many wonderful coaches, so many wonderful players that all tied into being recognized with him for the induction into the Hall of Fame. He would be thrilled. Earl Edwards probably wouldn't recognize Carter-Friendly Stadium today, given the many changes over the past decade. 
Then again, the rest of us probably wouldn't recognize NC State football today if not for Earl Edwards and the Hall of Fame job he did as head coach.